Hi, Chefeteers. I'm Chef Nakia, and I want you to be more confident in the kitchen. And today I am sharing tips and tricks on plating design. Now I get it, I get it. Most of the time, the appearance of the food is not the number one priority. It's did dinner get on the table? Is the family fed and happy? And do I still have an ounce of energy to clean up and get to bed on time? I get it. However, there are times when maybe you do want to impress. Uh, maybe you have a picky eater and you want to try something a little bit different to get them excited to eat the food. Maybe you are having a dinner party and you want to impress your guests. Maybe you're, you don't have a family to feed yet, so you're like just getting dinner. Maybe it's not even on the dinner table, maybe it's on the couch, but you're having a date over and you want to impress. These plating design tips might not come into play every single day, but for those times when you do want to plate a meal and feel super special, I'm here to help. They say that we eat with our eyes first, so might as well, from time to time, like really embrace that and have fun with it, right? Before you start cooking, when you are planning what this meal is going to be, create a framework. So we want to focus on our main ingredient, oftentimes it's the protein of the dish, and build out from there. Think about a variety of colors, and textures and flavors because we're not only looking at the food we're eating it and we want it to be a fully enjoyed experience beginning to end but think about how different flavors will impact the types of colors that you can include in your dish sometimes um, this can be a little bit easier if you think of a theme especially if you're doing a dinner party a lot of times there can be a general theme around it and so that can help you narrow stuff down. And don't be afraid to experiment with garnishes to a degree. If your garnish is not adding important and missing flavor, texture, or color, then get rid of it. Because it's so easy for your plate to start looking cluttered and like just a last minute, I didn't know what to do so I started tossing things on if you use too many garnishes. So if you're gonna use a garnish, make sure it either adds super important flavor, texture, or color. Now talking a little bit more about color, but kind of backing up to the plate itself. White plates are going to give a very like clean, classic look to your dish. Black or dark colored plates will give it a more dramatic look. And super bright, bold plates can sometimes detract from the food and or it can create interesting colors in your food. Let me explain that better. So if you have something that is white, we have a white background and we add bright red on top of it, this is going to look like true red. And if we have a bright orange background, and we add red onto it, then it's going to actually make this red look less vibrant. Now, this type of color red is not really normal in your food. Usually the shades of red or other things that we are creating in our foods are less saturated, less bright than, you know, plastic lids. So whenever you have a bright color, it can as the base, it can make the food on top of it look even less saturated. And in our brains, when we look at food that isn't very bright, we think there's not going to be much flavor there. So if we're eating with our eyes first and we see a lot of colors of the food on our plate that all look kind of dull, um, subconsciously we're going to think, oh, the flavor will be dull. So try to stick with you know, white or light neutrals for a classic look and darker neutrals for a bolder, more dramatic look. 
and save the bright plates for a time when like you just want to have a lot of fun and you're really not focused on how your food is going to appear. I'm sure it's going to be super delicious and flavorful food, but maybe skip the bold, bright, brightly colored and patterned plates for this. Okay, and whenever we talk about dimension and balance, think about the rule of thirds. So in your mind, cut your plate into like the middle, the left side and the right side, or middle, the top and the bottom, something like that. You want to have something in the middle of your plate, but you don't want everything to be piled in the middle of your plate. With food, with, with plating design, we all, always want to see something in the middle. It looks very weird and like there's something obviously missing. It looks like a huge hole if you just have like four separate items in the four separate corners. It's just, there's something off-putting about it. So make sure you do have something in the middle, but balance the left side and the right side, or the top and the bottom with whatever is in the middle. You can also, I do love doing this whenever I have like sliced meat or kind of a layered thing, is put it diagonal across the plates. And then in each of these two corners, you can put something else. So an example of this could be if you have steak in the middle and you have a chimichurri in the top corner and couscous in the bottom corner. Or you could even put the chimichurri on top of the steak and do like roasted shishito peppers on in one corner and couscous in the other corner. And then that couscous might look nice with some type of little garnish on it to spruce up the color. But having the steak in the middle and then just having everything in the bottom corner and having the top corner completely empty, it would look very unbalanced and very awkward. So make sure that everything is balanced properly. You don't have to have like super duper even spacing necessarily, but think about how the space in the neutral space in between ingredients balances the weight of other portions of your dish. And then with dimension, height is your friend. So anytime we can like layer things on top of each other to create a little bit more height or pile things in a way to where they are growing up off of the plate almost looking um, instead of just having everything flat on the plate, it will make your dish seem more complex, more dynamic, more interesting. One of my tips that I really like is using a ring mold like this, or like a biscuit cutter or cookie cutters, anything like that that you have. And so you set this on the plate and you can pack in so many different things. You can do like couscous or rice, farro, any of those types of grains. You could, if you had like, um, I've seen this really done really well with tuna tartare. So any kind of like diced proteins or steamed vegetables, anything like that. You can pack into the ring and you can even do multiple layers if you want. And then whenever you take the ring away, as long as your, as long as what you use to fill the ring has some moisture to it without being super soupy and saucy, it's going to hold that cylindrical shape and be nice and tall. So it looks way more impressive than the effort to pack some stuff in here. And of course you can use all kinds of different sizes. Um, your guests will be like, wow, how did they do that? And you're like, it's just a simple ring cutter, but it also just looks very um, clean and intentional. Also, when you are planning your different components of your dish and what plates they go on, remember warm food should go on warm plates, cold food should go on cold plates. Now, I get it, we don't all have like plate warmers in our kitchens at home. <laughs> But if you have a warming drawer under your oven, you could pop your plates in there, you know, 15, 20 minutes before your guests arrive. Or my plates are always real hot when I get them out of the dishwasher. So if you wanna run a load of plates before your guests arrive, they'll still be warm from the dishwasher. For cold, you can just throw them in the fridge and they'll get chilled. So you don't want to serve 
a super hot item right next to a super cold item on the same plate because it won't take long for those two items to become room temperature. This one that's supposed to be really hot is gonna taste like, ooh, it's kind of too cold. This one that's supposed to be cold, it might get wilty or it'll just, you know, it'll be like, oh, this isn't supposed to be this warm. So I always recommend that you use separate plates or at least like a buffer plate. So what this might look like is if you have a cold salad and you want to add like sizzling hot side to it, use a skillet. You can use a little skillet and you can put that next to it. If you have a warm dish and you just want to add a tiny little, you know, cold side of something, you can use a garnish dish like this, chill this, and size. Be sure to use a plate that is an appropriate size for your food. How many of you have been to a restaurant where they bring out a ribeye and it is literally the size of the dinner plate? And now you have to slide the ribeye half off of your plate so that you can start cutting and eating and these portions of meat don't just fall off the opposite side. And so you're in this very weird, like, okay, half my food is on my plate, half of it's kind of off, I hope it's not touching the table, I just don't have enough space. You might even start to feel a little bit claustrophobic or something. We don't want that. <laughs> so make sure that your plates are big enough for the food that you are serving on it so that people don't feel like they have to like use the table as a second plate. Also, if you have items on in your dish that uh, tend to be a little, um, they want to jump, jump ship, <laughs> if you kind of chase them around the plate a bit, make sure that nobody can just chase them right off the plate. Uh, serve that in a plate or shallow bowl that has some kind of lip to it so that you can kind of capture that item um, and it's not going off the table or into your neighbor's plate. And then also make sure that you plan pour the portions appropriately. So if you're doing a seven course meal, every portion should be pretty small. <laughs> and therefore your plates should match that. You don't want to serve a small portion on a ginormous plate because then people will naturally look around and say, oh, I think I'm missing some. Or it can almost feel rude as in like, I got shortchanged, like they, they didn't give me enough food. I should have gotten more of this. You don't want your plate to be too small. You also don't want your plate to be too big. It can feel like rude or like a joke kind of too. And a lot of us have probably seen pictures in like super upscale restaurants where the plate is ginormous and then it's like one scallop in the middle or something. And it might look beautiful, but it, I always giggle. I think, it's, I think it's pretty funny whenever you have this huge plate and you've got like one bite of food. Um, it, it's comical, but not in the best way. Like you don't want that to be your entertainment for the evening. So be sure to choose plates that are going to fit your portion sizes appropriately and you choose your portion sizes that are going to not overwhelm anybody and also not leave anybody starving at the end of the meal. All right, as you're going through all of this, always keep your main focus on your main ingredient so that that is the focal point of your plate and everything is built around it and supporting it. When we look at a plate, we want our eyes to first focus on the main ingredient because that gives us, us comfort in like, okay, I know what I'm about to be eating here. I know what the focus of this dish is and then I'll explore the sides. So make sure you lean into that and you focus your plate design around the main ingredient. You want people's eyes to go there first and then naturally move about the plate to take it all in. All right, and then my last major tip is to Plate your saucy type items first because inevitably you will drip on the plate a little bit. It's a lot easier to wipe off a little drip uh, whenever there's not a bunch of other stuff in your way. You also then don't run the risk of dripping sauce right over 
some portion of your dish where like you didn't want to see drips of sauce on top of your rice, whatever it may be. Also, if you are going to flood the plates or the bowl, make sure that you do that before setting all of your components in. There's nothing worse <laughs> than, than uh, putting that sauce on afterwards and then everything looks like, you know when, um, it's, I think like cartoons a lot of times, they'll like have a wave come up to beachgoers and it just like smushes them and they're just all soaked and they don't look happy. You don't want your food looking like that. <laughs> Flood the plate first and then place your items. And with sauces, you wanna make sure that the thickness of your sauce matches the textures of your food. So you do not want to use a super thick, heavy sauce with a very light flavored food that has like very crispy texture. So now I'm going to get into some don't do this, do this instead to kind of review what we've talked about here. Number one, do not overcrowd your plate. You don't want your plate looking cluttered. You don't want people to feel almost like anxiety from looking at, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat? There's so much here. I, ugh. Don't overcrowd your plate. Keep it on the simpler side. You know how there's minimalism and maximalism? With food, we don't want to be too far on either side. We want to be in the middle, but maybe just slightly towards the minimal side. So instead of overcrowding your plate, what can you do? You can serve a smaller portion size, or if that is the appropriate portion size, use a larger plate or a deeper plate, because sometimes if we are able to stack a food a little bit taller in a deeper plate or bowl, then it won't look so overwhelming. And then number three would be just use separate plates. Do not make it monochromatic. Monochromatic is boring. Color in food is different than color in interior design or fashion. Not that I know much about fashion, but <laughs> I do know that in food, if everything on your plate is about the same color, Especially it's bad if it's all like beigey, yellow, whatever. We are going to instinctively think this doesn't have very much flavor. This is boring. In food, monochromism is boring. Sorry, it just is. So if you have already <laughs> cooked all of these things and then you realize, oh my gosh, it's all basically the same color. You can add some garnishes if they're appropriate for the dish. You can consider a different, slightly different cooking method. So if you still have a chance, you could go put something on the grill and get some beautiful sear marks on it and that'll give you some great additional dimension uh, without having to like prepare a whole new garnish. But really, if you can plan it from the beginning to Include as much of the rainbow as possible without it looking too messy or cluttered, then do that. Do not, at the last minute, think, maybe I need a sauce and I'm just gonna toss a heavy sauce on top of this. Number one, think back to that little nice wave metaphor that I gave. Everything on your plate is gonna look like, bleh, we're not happy. Do not have to add a heavy sauce last minute. If you do think, ooh, I wanna add some last minute flavor, you can use a flavored oil and just give a light drizzle of oil and a sprinkle of sea salt, something like that. That's gonna add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of that extra last minute interest without like drowning your food. And lastly, do not overthink it, <laughs> which I know is just wonderful coming from me talking for the last 20 something minutes about all of these things to keep in mind whenever you are designing your plate. But truly, don't overthink it. Focus on your main ingredient, build around that and a variety of flavors, colors, and textures that you enjoy. And when in doubt, like, leave it out. The great thing is you are not the first person to have ever put together a beautiful dish. And oftentimes, when we are cooking certain items, we naturally think of sides to go with those items that pair well 
from a flavor viewpoint while also adding complexity. The good news is that oftentimes when we cook, we have side dishes and or garnishes that naturally come to us because of what we've eaten before that we know pairs well together. And a lot of times there's already gonna be a variety of colors and flavors and textures in these different proteins and sides just because we've had it before and we enjoyed it and we're now replicating it. So don't overthink it. Don't think that you have to come up with the very first combination of something that you've ever seen or that just because you didn't intentionally want to add green in the, I'll go, I'll go back to the chimichurri, in the chimichurri, it's there. It's great flavor. It's a natural addition, uh, like pairing with steak and it's a beautiful, vibrant green color. So take advantage of that. Um, you don't have to overthink, how am I gonna add green? You can just think, okay, what pairs all well with this? And oh, bonus points, it's a beautiful green color. And as with anything, the more that you play around with this, the more natural it will become. And you will get to a point where even if it is a night where you just want to get dinner on the table, you'll have these thoughts pop into your mind of, ooh, I could position this like this and add this here. And ooh, let's, let's add a little bit more color in this place. And you'll find that in very minimal effort, you can make a really beautiful Michelin star award looking plate just by getting a little bit more comfortable with some of these tips and tricks. And as always, we may eat with our eyes first, but we truly eat with our tongues and our palates. So if it tastes good, if the texture's great, the temperatures are appropriate, and you enjoy it, then it's a great meal for you. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you have a fun, creative, and confident experience in the kitchen soon.